Hey guys, what's up? Mike Taylor, AKA Battleship Cobra here. Today with another really short tutorial, we're gonna talk about affecting form mode in SAP Business One with B1UP and what that's all about. But first, check out www.battleshipcobra.com for my crystal reports for SAP Business One course or my SQL for SAP Business One course, online self-paced courses. They're very inexpensive and you can learn crystal reports or SQL right from scratch and you can get to a really high level. I make weekly videos Mondays at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you like the video, like it. If you wanna see more, subscribe. Otherwise, join the notification squad by clicking the bell below once you've subscribed to get an email every time I make a new video. So what exactly is affecting form mode? Well, if you've tried to use a formatted search and the formatted search is on refresh regularly and you go back to a form and your formatted search triggers and it causes a field to change, it changes your form mode from okay mode to update mode. And that starts to get annoying because when you're scrolling through the documents, you don't wanna see that update mode every time because it's just a piece of information that, they're, that you're going to output. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna add an account balance output field, and then I'm gonna show you what happens when you scroll between the different documents and then I'm gonna fix that by removing effects form mode. So let's jump into that lesson. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to add a field for account balance, just as something, as an example. Tools, customization tools, user-defined fields, marketing documents, title, add, account bal, account balance. We're gonna make this numeric. Uh, units and totals, we'll say amounts, and that'll be good. Ignore. Okay. Go back to your sales order. Okay, so we're gonna place this field. And here's a little trick. If you're placing a field up here and you wanna use this extra space in here, my little trick is to take any field, add it here, Place it below. It'll place that field there. Then go to your field that you want to place below it. Add this UDF below. And then just click right in there. Okay, in a couple of seconds, you're going to have that field placed there perfectly spaced and it will all have relative positions. So the last thing you need to do is remove that other one that you added, the ETD. Go to B1 Usability Package, Edit Item Placement Tool. Scroll to the bottom of the UDFs. Estimated Departure Date. From Pain, just put 999. It doesn't really matter here, it's just gonna stay disappeared and it's gonna keep spacing the specific field that you're using. So you come back and you can still use your local currency perfectly, but your account balance now is perfectly placed below the local currency and you can continue to place fields below that using this area perf perfectly. And if you resize the fonts because you're not using pixel placement, it's gonna size itself perfectly. So let's go back and we're gonna to try to add this on our data load function. So it's gonna cover uh, data load function, so I'll use my B1 usability package, edit B1 validation configurations. If you don't know what a data load function is, it basically loads data whenever you switch between records or whenever a set of data is loaded into that particular form. So I already have one kind of set up. I load this one. This is what I use when I'm swiping between different uh, documents. So I'm gonna open up my universal function. And if you don't know anything about what I'm doing, you're gonna to want to go back and do a little bit more learning about B1 usability package, look at universal functions, look at B1 validation configurations. I'm not really covering that too much in detail for this one. So from the account balance, we're gonna right click, copy this, boy x 41.0.number I don't usually care about that. So what we're gonna say is, in between here, we're gonna set, that field I just placed, I don't usually care about number. It can be number if it wants, but I'm just gonna leave it like that. And then a little trick here is tools, queries, 
OCRD, then we just want balance. I think just to double check the field, it's called balance. Okay, so we take just balance, just I want to check what it is. So we go OCRD dot balance. It is a little trick here that if you are on a marketing document, you could just refer directly to the business partner table as well. So there's, oh, but you got to spell it right. So we're going to document this, uh, set uh, BP balance, and then that should do it. So let's click update, go back to the document. So we're going to click last data record. So it's going to load that you can see into the balance, but look at the problem. It, it turned it to update mode because it had it there, but I'm like, I don't want to store this each time. Because then, you know, see when I try to scroll between them, it's going to go and it's going to reload it. Every time you do it, it's annoying. So you don't need to use that and that and that doesn't need to be a problem. You just want to output that to see what the live account balance is for that customer. So we can leave this here, but we're going to go and close this and we're going to go back to our BP or our uh, item placement tool. And we're going to find our account balance row. So we know that this is what BX 41. It's the very lowest one account balance. So we're going to scroll and what we want to do is uncheck effects form mode. So you can modify this and it will not flip it to update no matter what you do to it. So that is a very good trick. So if you find yourself constantly, seeing the update, uncheck that effects form mode and you won't have to deal with that. In addition, right justifying makes it look nicer and suppress zeros will make it blank if it's zero. So that kind of makes it look nicer as well. And you can also again modify the back color if you want or any of these other things that you need to do. So I click update, click okay. Close this, we'll close this guy and then we'll reopen the sales order. Push the last data record. And you can see here it updated that information, but it didn't prompt me to do this. And if this changes, it's not going to need to store it anyways. So it's perfect. So the downside is it won't store that information, but the thing about this type of thing, and if you run into this situation is, you know, say you're just adding a sum of some fields on this and, it, and it's, you don't necessarily need to store it. You're just outputting it for the customer. Um, you can just have it do that and not show the update. Another couple of little points here is you can go edit, edit, item placement. You can make that uh, disabled for any of the form modes. So we're going to say, let's just have it never enabled. So it will just be a read-only field. You should be able to keep the exact same code and make it work too. Go back to your sales order and boom, you have a kind of cool little account balance. When you move between documents, it's going to reload it. When you go back to this and say the account balance has changed, you can use this as a reference. You don't have to do it with account balance, but again, if you run into that situation and you're doing macros on data load and you do have a field like that, you can just uncheck effects form mode and do it that way. I have another little tricky little trick. I've covered this in another video, but you can do this actually without using uh, B1 up at all. You can click the customer BPMD and you can actually left click and hold and drag those into these bottom four fields. I bet you didn't know what these fields were. So I can use alt to click to clear it. I have phone number, name, these notes, and then I have this one. I'm just going to drag it there. So when you're on a document that has that particular BP, it's going to show that information in the bottom right. So that's a little trick. It doesn't even need to be used with B1 up at all, but it's just a bonus there. So I hope that helped you a little bit. The effects form mode is kind of a little like niche, you know, niche setup. But if you're doing a lot of B1 up stuff, especially with macros, you might run into the need for that, or you might want to output some information or total for that particular customer, but you don't need to store that information and you just want it for information purposes only where it doesn't affect the form mode. So that's what that is for.
And that's what that is all about. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe. And if you want to see more videos, get an email when my videos are published. Click the bell below and join the notification squad. Go to www.battleshipcobra.com to check out my crystal reports for SMB Business One course, my SQL for SMB Business One course. I produce videos weekly at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Mondays. Keep watching, enjoy my other videos. There's tons and tons of them. And thank you guys so much for the feedback. Thank you for everything. And have an awesome day. Bye for now.